What's up everybody, it's Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio One Tutorials.com and today we're gonna be looking at layering loops. What's up everybody, it's Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com. Today we're going to be looking at um, using loops and just layering them and making it sound more your own. Um, there's a, There's been like a little discussion on on, like on Twitter and shit uh, with the producer community just talking about, you know, using MIDI and using loops and stuff like that. And, um, you know, just it, it, there's nothing wrong with it, bro. Like it's, it's the same thing as using samples, except instead of it being a famous um, song that was released and is already a hit record and proven you know to be a smash you're you know you're fucking with somebody who's 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 made it specifically for you to chop up and use so um with that being said I, I have this um i have this track pulled up that i'm that i'm working with right now oh by the way if you guys have not picked up the savage 808s it's a sub you need to stop by and get these, man. Especially, especially, I'm seeing a lot of, uh, I'm seeing a lot of searches for the, um, for, for like extension 808 and stuff like that, dude. If you guys, if you guys haven't, if you guys aren't up on that, like, I have two of those where you don't have to, you know, go through a whole bunch of crazy distortion and stuff like that. Like, I've already programmed them like that. So if you're looking to get that sound, you can definitely find it in here. This is a fucking awesome pack. I still can't believe that I made these. Like, I'm really impressed myself with that. But, um, this track right here it's is based around this loop that i was working with sorry this loop let's see so i'll put it Yeah, you can hear the first thing that you notice or, or that I notice about this loop. I mean, it's, it's a dope loop, obviously I'm using it, but if you pull up your Pro EQ and you look at the frequency, you know, you're missing, you don't got a lot of stuff at 10K. It's not, there's not a lot going on in the low mids except for this little hit right here. And, um, um, you know you could make a whole track around it but you're gonna wind up you're gonna wind up feeling empty and that's that's the thing that you find out with a lot of especially like modern loops is um not the company modern loops but just the the stuff that's coming out now is is what a lot of these guys do is they're is they're making <clears throat> you know pieces and then and then, and then band pass filtering them in like wide bands and stuff like that um and then to to just make it sound more full you're gonna want to you might want to layer and put your own stuff in so what i did was i took this uh i took this patch from omnisphere because it kind of matched up this boys choir and i'm playing it on top of this loop And the, and the reason why I know what I'm doing here is because this loop is a D minor, right? And so what I did to get this variation where that goes up right there, I just raised it uh, with the transpose. I bounced it out already, but I raised it up five semitones, which is the, uh, which gets us to, you go up five semitones from D, you get to D, E, F, you get the G, which is the fourth note in the scale. So it's, so it's like a one, four chord progression. If you guys want to know more about what I'm talking about, hit up um, Studio One Tutorials, Music Theory Made Simple. We're on 11 parts right now, just killing it. Um, but yeah, so I just went ahead and wrote this real quick open, uh, uh, it got open chord right here, and then, and then you know, uh, second inversion here, no big deal. And, um, 
the uh, what I the problem that I got to here and the reason why I stopped I stopped making the beat and started making the video was um, sometimes when you're layering stuff and, and you're trying to get the timing to sync up um, this this patch because it's a because it's a, a, a vocal patch the attack on it is kind of slow and this is a really tight quantized song so um, and this is going to happen with certain horn sounds or string sounds and stuff like that. And again, um, I just want to show you guys um, a lot of the, like, what working in audio can, um, you know, kind of benefit you and, and, and give you a more unique sound. So I'm just going to go ahead, press Control B, um, bounce this down, and you'll see that, one, Omnisphere still has the problem with fucking not bouncing the first, uh, the first, um, note that it gets that it hears but so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this is uh this is my four chord that i was playing all right and then i'll i'll take my one over here all right and what we have now is we got this so you got that and you got this now you can see just by looking at the wave that this has a really a really slow attack um and let me just boost up the, the wave size here, you can really see it, and that's what I don't like about it. I want it, I want it to come in and just be like ha 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 instead of ha. You know, I don't want, I don't want that ramp up for as ever short as it is. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to get rid of the attack on this. Now we have this sound. See, it jumps right out at you. All right, now I'm just going to. All right, cool. And I'm gonna do the same thing here, just get rid of that preliminary ramp up, right? Boom, nice. So now I could just go ahead and write in the pattern that I had before, which was just a four on the floor of each one. I'm just pressing D to duplicate. Also, now that I'm working in audio, you see how the, how this is louder, you know, because I've got more I've got more voices in it. I could just go ahead and just bring the gain on this down. Boom. So now I don't have to, you know, now I don't have to worry about that. I got a more even um, distribution of volume. So now when I play it up against this. And you see, you see now I've got that. Now I don't have, I don't have the reverb of the, uh, of the, uh, of the, of the initial sample. I mean, I've got it in the audio, but now it cuts off. So now, so now I've got this like a really, you know, a really nice um, sampled feel to it. Then I could go ahead and throw on like a decapitator, just give it a little bit of drive, make it a little grungy. <laughs> Make it a lot of grungy. Yeah. All right, now I'll bring this down and tuck it back. And see why I'm doing that is because we have this sound, which already sounds dirty. Got this guy going. So I've got that. That's nice. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, let's see here. Let's take, let's take fuck ass Nexus because they do have, see, because what I'm missing now is I, I still, I'm, I'm still like not feeling the, um, the low mids. So I'm going to go into the, uh, Hollywood expansion. And now nah, the contra, let's go to the cello. Let's just fuck with this for a second. And it's just uh, again the whole focus here is to just fill out this frequency space so that so that we have just a more professional sounding beat. So you see right here, 
if you remember the beginning of the video like around 200 we weren't really hitting with anything now and then i can even i can even filter some of this out because i don't need that shit. so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the same thing you know just bounce it to audio because again, I'm going for this, I'm going for this heart attack. All right. Whoa, got a little clippage here. I don't like that. Let's just turn you back down, Bubba. Remember, you could always turn stuff, uh, you can always turn stuff off. Oh, shit, I'm, I'm tripping. That was just because of this. Oops. All right, anyway. All right, so again, you could see these, you know, you could see these very slow attacks popping off. So I'm just gonna do the same thing, just. Cut these guys right, sure. Cause I, I want it to sound you know obnoxious and sampled you know i don't want it to sound like like i'm playing nexus which sounds extremely cheesy especially nowadays all right so i'll just take this boom and i'm do and i'm doing this fade just to avoid the clipping that you know that's going to happen from just cutting just cutting the wave wherever I want to so again just hit this press and D to duplicate it out you go ahead and take a look at because we got the same situation where these are going to be louder just turn these down boom okay now I'll bring him into the party, see what we got. Alright, so we're a little loud right there. Now if I go ahead and take a look at See if I put a Pro EQ on the band bus and look at all of my instruments grouped together, we're gonna have a much fuller frequency range. You see without it, how we got nothing going on at 200 and now when I go ahead and add it in. We still got, you know, we got 50, you know, up until 100, that's open so the so the um, 808 can do what it does. But, and you can hear the difference now. I mean, that, that cello, it's not like, it's not a crucial sound. You're not um, really fixated on it, but. And then. Just to just to kind of dirty things up a little bit, I'm gonna filter it out at the top because you don't really need that. And that's pretty much it, you know. Um, so just the, the main thing to keep in mind when you're working when you're working with loops, even if, even if you find even if you find an amazing loop that you don't want to change the sound of it per se, um, but 
you you want to make you know you still want to make like a full and complete beat because the most important thing when composing when composing your music is paying mind to to filling out the filling out the frequency spectrum if you can't do that your beat is always going to sound empty so what you want to do is you want to analyze you, you want to look at it pull up your spectrum meter if you can't use if you can't tell by ear find out what's missing think of instruments that are typically played in those frequency realms and then use them or a synthetic version of them like you see when i was missing the 200 i went for the cello because that's a more bass centric in instrument that is you know gonna be found in those frequencies you wouldn't you wouldn't uh add a flute to put to put that sound you know what i'm saying so this is concrete zebra with craft master production studio one tutorials.com don't forget to come by and check out march music theory madness we're on 11 parts right now i'm probably going to drop a couple more and honestly I'm, I'm probably just going to keep on updating that tab because it just seems every day i find something new um that i could just teach you guys and i and i've actually had a lot of fun um, just teaching mu music theory and getting the feedback of it because it's, it's such a nerdy thing to talk about but it's so it, it's so practical and man and i realized it's it's what makes me fast so um keep it simple don't be basic and we will see you on the